Hello. Well, today I wanted to talk about something that, by this point, at the time you uh, see the video and it's uploaded, uh, is a, is news a bit out of date. Um, you know, back in March, uh, there was a list of films that are going to be out of print, or as, at least as of now, you watch it, are out of print in the Criterion Collection. Um, Paramount, and the films are uh, Nashville, La Dolce, La Dolce Vita, Days of Heaven, Don't Look Now, Rosemary's Baby, and Harold and Maude. Um, and of all of these, I actually own one, which is Rosemary's Baby. Um, you know, fantastic film. Uh, but, um, one thing about, uh, about the situation is, and I haven't had heard too many people mention this, is that, you know, um, no, no, of course, like, the reason for this happening is, um, I guess I should get to the reason, um, you know, Paramount is, you know, they have a new streaming service, and when I heard the news, I thought, okay, they might just want to retain any of the films that they, that are that are within the Criterion Collection that have been, you know, in the making for many years and might want, you know, want them uh, to be uh, a part uh, of, uh, like, an exclusive thing for their uh, streaming service. Though, comes to come to find out, uh, no, they uh, plan to have a new Blu-ray uh, line with the various films that are in it, like Rosemary's Baby, and um, I hope a part of that is uh, you get all the special features from here, like um, any exclusive like documentaries, uh, interviews that happened from here or were put on this release at least, you know, um, because sometimes you know you have some various DVD releases. Some Blu-ray releases, and then you know a company like Criterion, or Shout Factory, or Arrow, or any of these home video uh, licensing companies um, that really focus on uh, home video, uh, they put a lot of work into not only making the film look and sound the best it could possibly be. But also, uh, for all who enjoy special features, uh, you can get a whole lot. You know, sometimes, at various times, you know, there's sometimes there's DVDs with more or better special features than, say, like a Blu-ray release for whatever reason. Um, one c that comes to mind for me is uh, Reservoir Dogs. Um, the Blu-ray release of that uh, is a bit disappointing, at least for me, because... Uh, you know, I have the 10th anniversary DVD of Reservoir Dogs, and I also bought the 10th anniversary DVD, or the 15th anniversary DVD also. I got the DVD first, and then I got the Blu-ray, but the Blu-ray was lacking, and I noticed that the DVD of the 15th anniversary of Reservoir Dogs had more special features. Um, uh, now, Cr Criterion and, you know, Shout Factory and Arrow and other... Uh, companies that specialize in stuff like this, what they often do is they are they do their best to get all that stuff, all those special features, and then put them all on a disc or two discs at times, you know, depending on how much material it might be a bit too much for a disc, so they might have to split it on two. Um, so, you know, that's something that's great with the Criterion stuff, um, and hopefully Paramount, uh, for some of these, because it says here on the back, you know, um, a new documentary with interviews with Polanski, Mia Farrow, and producer Robert Evans, as well as have some interviews with the author in 1997 um, uh, of a radio program. New York about his book and sequel and the film. Uh, 
as well as a documentary on the life and jazz musician and composer. Um, and there's also a booklet uh, in here, but you know, the booklet may not, booklet stuff may not ever be a part of uh, Paramount's new line. They might not have any of that stuff. So if you enjoy, you know, not only the special features and stuff, but if you like the uh, booklets and the essay, like from here, um, and you did not get this from Criterion or whatever, or Barnes and Noble or wherever at the time you could sell them or you can buy them at a fairly reasonable price. Now, if you buy the films on Amazon or eBay, there's going to be a lot of people trying to uh, obviously uh, kind of ex uh, exploit the fact that this is now an out of print title. And the other titles I mentioned too, but that, this is just one that I own that is no longer available to buy. And you know they would try to you know uh, they would want to you know uh, mark the price up as much as they could. Uh, sometimes very outrageous and just flat out. Why would you ever? Why would anybody, unless they're really rich and have such a disposable amount of income that paying like a thousand dollars or something for just one of these movies would be the equivalent of basically uh, 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 buying something for ten dollars at the end of the day, you know, something like that. You know, unless you're somebody who is in that kind of position of such disposable income that, you know, you would be able to live your entire life fine, pay all the bills and stuff that you would ever have to pay your entire life, no problem, and be able to buy a whole bunch of stuff like Blu-rays or DVDs or whatever you, you would like. You know, that would be like the only way anybody would ever pay a thousand dollars for something like that. And I've seen some of the stuff like The Man Who Fell From Earth, I've actually got one point in the Criterion Edition, which has been out of print for many years now. And as of now, it doesn't seem to be uh, returning anytime soon, but, you know, they, they had that uh, uh, for many years, and then they lost the licensing for it, so it went out of print. And then people on eBay and on Amazon posted ridiculous prices, and even still today, I believe, now, granted, I haven't looked recently, but I looked a few months back, and it, there are some still ridiculous prices. There are many that aren't thousand uh, dollars, which is good, but still, it's a bit ridiculous that how some people just take advantage of the situation and just mark a ridiculous amount. Like, no. Um, I guess depending on the film, if you marked it as a, at a hundred dollars, like perhaps somebody would think that this edition of Rosemary's Baby would be worth paying a hundred dollars if it's out of print. I don't know. I don't know I, if I would do that myself, but, uh, you know, that's me. I, I don't believe I would, but you know, I guess you never know. I guess it would depend on the movie and how much I wanted it. Um, you know, if I thought the price would justify it, you know, of course I'd have to look it up and make sure I would be getting my money's worth. You know, that's a, another part of it, but I don't think a thousand dollars would be worth paying for this film or any of the others that I listed off and you can look at. Um, now, I want to say, you know, while there were many people disappointed months ago, understandably so, I just want to say that uh, sometimes titles return. So while, you know, Paramount is going to release these films again on Blu-ray, which I think is a good thing, you know, it's not going to be exclusively streaming or anything like that. I was kind of worried that they're going to try and sort of pull people away from buying Blu-rays and DVDs and just, or anything of that sort and just subscribe to their uh, sub uh, subscription, you know. If you don't own the movie on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever, well, if you like Rosemary's Baby or any of those films, you can only watch it on Paramount Plus. And it's a good thing that they aren't doing that because that would that would suck. Um, 
but again, I hope that they do import all, or if, if anything, at the least, most, and perhaps some brand new stuff that they can include all plus more uh, special features onto the new uh, releases that they're going to do, uh, going to have. Um, and I just hope that. I hope for that. That would be great. Um, you get not only all the stuff from this edition, but new stuff. That would be great. Not just for Rosemary's Baby, but for other films. Um, that would be excellent, I think. Um, and also, I, again, I, before I sort of derailed on another point that I just recalled, that would be good to make beforehand, you know, titles do return to the Criterion Collection. Uh, case in point, um, I've mentioned this various times, but um, Sid and Nancy, uh, this edition was in 1998, um, and after a while, this went out of print. Now, I've, as I mentioned, I got this on eBay, and it was actually a decent price. It was, I didn't pay, this was not a hundred dollars, but it was still fairly reasonable, especially considering that this is out of print. Um, it was almost out of print for like about almost 20 years. I believe I got this in 2017, I believe. Or 16, 17. Because this version, which is the Blu-ray, and they were able to get the licensing back and put all the special features and some more stuff on here, and they were able to uh, re-release as they were able to get the licensing back. Um, so that does happen, uh, and it still has its, uh, it's still number 20 in the spine number, which is cool. Or, well, that's upside down. It's still number 20, which is cool. Um, so, you know, I got this about 20 years after it was released on DVD and later went out of print. This is a excellent edition. And this is also, you know, both are great. This has uh, more special features. So, you know, if that's something you really like, yeah, you got you covered here. Um, and you don't have to pay a whole lot of money for this edition. You know, I didn't pay as much. I think I paid like $60, $70. Yeah, I think it was $70 or so. Uh, it might have been like a 60 something, but, you know, round it out plus tax. You know, it's basically 70 Um And I think that's actually quite good. I didn't want to pay over 100 because it's like, you know, while the film itself is fine, um, you know, I think the performances like of like Gary Oldman, for instance, is what really makes this movie fantastic, honestly. Um, not that there aren't other good moments to it, but it's like his performance and uh, Chloe Webb's performance and their uh, chemistry really helps this film. Um, but, you know, the Blu-ray is excellent. Uh, and I remember uh, not long after I got this, like a few months later, they announced this was returning to the Criterion Collection. They just got the licensing again, and they filmed some stuff, uh, some new stuff with it, and got some new things to incorporate on the D or the Blu-ray release, as well as the new DVD release. And so, you know, they... They got this. They they got it again, re-released it, and so that happened years later. And who's to say that will never happen uh, for Rosemary's Baby or any of the other movies like Nashville? Um, I think you know it is fairly likely, or at least in the realm of possibility. Like you know, some years go by, maybe. At, Possibly the earliest, I would say, and this is being generous and conservative and such with numbers, that maybe within 10 years, uh, they might be able to 
internal negotiations after they had a new Blu-ray release of Roseberry's Baby of Nashville and other films that were in the Criterion Collection at one point and they lost licensing and they released on Paramount's new Blu-ray line. You know, who's to say that won't happen again? That after their new release and maybe into some new features, they might uh, release this film and the others again. You know, I think that is within the realm of possibility, and there aren't too many people who have pointed that out. How you know they had a f had films before, and and you know Sid and Nancy is just one example. There's been other examples too, um, but that's just for me. You know how I've got a film that was out of print, and then some time later, not too long, they announced that it was coming back to the collection, uh, and this time on Blu-ray. Uh, so. You know, for those who are quite disappointed that the Criterion version is gone, you just pull it out, you know, maybe, you know, you'll be able to get everything from the Criterion set in terms of special features onto the new release that Paramount will have. And then they might uh, also, some years from now, may release it again. And this time with all of the stuff, plus maybe any more new stuff that they imported uh, onto it, if they get the rights back. You know, you never know. It's always important to be as fairly optimistic with stuff like this. And also with one's money, be smart. Don't be, don't pay more than you need. Don't be just buying stuff willy-nilly just because, well, it's out of print, uh, and I need to get it. You know, yeah, it's nice to have certain things, um, but it's also important to know sometimes uh, you got to just uh, put a hold on things and just uh, look if you, uh, if you really want something and if you do, are you willing to pay X amount for it? And if you're, the answer is no... You know, wait a while, maybe look around a bit more. You might find one where a version of this or the other movies that is available but cheaper and is in good condition. Um, and so that could be very beneficial to you and others. Um, you know, to those who are buying it or being or selling it, you know, they market at a reasonable price and the film has been in good condition and you know it's been watched here and there but maybe not a film that has been watched constantly so things are quite good it looks good no scratches or maybe as little as possible and so you know it's in very good condition and if it's at a price that's reasonable not a ridiculous amount but within the realm of how if somebody come, came across it, they would want to buy it, want to purchase it. And if so, you know, there you go. person gets some money, and the person who uh, purchased it uh, is going to get the film. And so, uh, in terms of that, you know, I don't do that too often. I only do it for certain films that I wanted, and there's a certain edition that would really be worth getting but at the same time I don't want to you know buy a film and spend an absorbent amount of money you know Sid and Nancy I had seen various times on TV when I was younger I enjoyed it of course I'm a big Gary Oldman fan as you all know by now uh, so I wanted to have that and especially Criterion because you know I was at a time when I was fairly comfortable in loving to collect as many Criterion films as I could. Um, and I can, you know. I don't always buy Criterion movies. Um, there are some films in their collection that uh, I've either seen and I know I don't like, or I see, I have seen them, but, and while I might like them, I might have the film also already, and maybe the Criterion uh, edition may not necessarily be worth the price. You know, sometimes that does happen. Uh, like Parasite. 
I don't know if I'll uh, ever buy the Criterion Collection version of Parasite. You know, I might. You know, I may one day. But if I do, it's not going to... I don't see it happening anytime soon. Unless just the moment just sort of... Uh, strikes me, and I think that would be a good purchase. Maybe it's also uh, one of the sales, and it might pop up in the midst of any of the wish lists I have, of, or the stuff on the wish list of Criterion.com or whatever, or Barnes and Noble. It might pop up on the site or something like. You might also like, you know, have other titles. Um, so you know, you, you have to make sure that you know what you want, you gotta make sure if it's worth the price, especially for these out-of-print films or titles, um, you gotta make sure that it's well worth the price. I don't know if spending more than a hundred dollars on this would be really worth it. This is a very good release. It's a very good film also. You know, I enjoy it. I like this release, but I wouldn't pay a hundred dollars for this or any more. Uh, I paid like forty dollars for it. Um, I could see it perhaps twenty to thirty dollars more than the initial price. I could possibly see because it's out of print, but I don't know if any more than that. But that's just me. You know, everyone has a different opinion. Everybody has a different way of uh, doing stuff like that. Um, if you're comfortable paying a hundred dollars for like a film like Rosemary's Baby from the Criterion Collection, that's now out of print on a site like eBay or Amazon from one of their users. Oh, you know, hey, that's that's your call. Um, but I just wanted to make this video because you know, while of course it's been a while since this has occurred, and I'm sure people are beyond it. But you know, I uh, on the off chance that somebody some but you may see this and be a bit disappointed they hadn't gotten this or another film like Nashville that maybe they put off and were waiting for the next sale or whatever to finally buy this or any of those other uh, titles. Um, you know, uh, either search on eBay and... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Amazon and see if there's any uh, sellers uh, that have it at a reasonable price or at a price that you don't mind buying. I guess regardless if it's reasonable or not, I guess, you know, I guess if what you do with your money is your business. Um, but it's, I think it's also important to make sure you look at things before you buy them and judge if it's worth the price. If it is for you, if you think any of those are listed at a well-reasoned price, and you buy it, then great. Or uh, wait and see the new releases from Paramount. Um, you know, if it's well worth it, and it looks like a great release, and has uh, all or most of the special features, um, plus more, um, then great. Um, then basically you have the Criterion version without the Criterion logo and stuff. So, you know, um, obviously do what you think is, uh, 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 would work for you. Make sure you know, uh, you prioritize and know that you're, uh, <clears throat> spending your money accordingly and uh, are just happy and fine with uh, your decision of doing so. Um, you know, you can, uh, you know, it's, there's other ways to get these films too, not just from Criterion, um, but Criterion has had m many excellent releases and puts a lot of care under movies that they release under their uh, brand. So, you know, I understand the disappointment. Um, I was never a huge Nashville fan, but I remember hearing it was no longer going to be part of the collection. A part of me was like, I wish I got that. Um, <clears throat> but that's fine. 
you know, it's a title that, you know, if I ever get someday, all right, be it from Criterion, the Criterion version, or uh, elsewhere, that's that's fine with me. Um, but, you know, it's one of those move, one of those things you sort of kind of regret later, but, you know, the, at the end of the day, uh, that happens. And uh, it is unfortunate when these, uh, uh, you know, licenses do run out for under the Criterion Collection and they're not able to reacquire them, renew the license, or whatever the terminology is. Um, and the studio that owns the film then comes and, you know, they take it and they keep it and they re-release it later uh, on Blu-ray again. Or if they already have it, they just keep pumping those out. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, that's really all I wanted to say. I know this went a bit longer than I intended, but um, still, I think it's something that's worth talking about because, you know, that only doesn't necessarily apply to right now, but, uh, any potential other films later in the collection that could possibly go out of print. Um, it's interesting to now, <laughs> to know that I now own a few films that are no longer in the collection, the Criterion Collection, and, uh, I didn't know if that would happen, um. I didn't think that would exactly, but it has, and, you know, that happens sometimes. Um, but there are other ways, of course, to buy these films and these titles, and other titles that were in the Criterion Collection and aren't anymore. Uh, so, you know, those are my, that's my thoughts uh, on that matter. Granted, it's months old, but, you know, I just wanted to come on and just talk about this. Uh, you know, not any specific movie, but it has related to movies, too. Um, anyway, um, hope you all have a great week, and a great weekend, and a great day, and I uh, see you all next time.